couple of reminders before we get started. We're going to start with an opening question, opening statement, excuse me, from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand. Someone will come around with a microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address the questions in room first and go to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with an opening statement from NC State head coach Kevin Keats. Well, uh, what a what a great game, and um, obviously um, we played against a really good, well coached Texas Tech team, and you know they pushed us to the limit. I, I thought we had a uh, incredible size advantage uh, when you look at you know DJ Burns and you look at the way Ben played, and then Mo. I thought those guys really delivered for us inside and did a lot of good things, and you know we got stronger. In the second half, I thought we started defending. I thought more in the first half was more of an offensive game. And uh, we decided to sit down and defend and did some good things. And then we completely played the game through our post. We kind of went inside out. And I think it really worked out for us. So questions? Uh, representing NC State student athletes are DJ Burns Jr. and Ben Middlebrooks. Questions for student athletes? Back middle right there. Michael Perchick, ABC 11. Uh, ben, 21 points, season high. Was there anything particular about this matchup or about the game flow that you were able to pick up on? You had a very strong first half, obviously continued into the second half as well. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I mean, I got to give a lot of the credit for that to the guards. I mean, you got guys like DJ Horn out there drawing a lot of attention to himself. I mean, drawing traps and things like that makes it easy for kind of pick and rolls and things like that. And then obviously Michael O'Connell, I mean, the vision that he has, being able to find me on some of those things for easy layups. And, uh, I mean, they really just make it easy. So, I mean, I got to give a lot of that to them. Right middle, right middle. Brooke Pryor, ESPN, uh, DJ and Ben, yesterday your coach said that he was going to have to maybe come up with something because it's not an ACC team, some kind of motivation compare Texas Tech to an ACC team to give you guys an edge. What did you find? What kind of motivation did you find going up against a team that you didn't know very well before tonight? Uh, to be honest, our coaches gave us all that we needed. They gave us all the tools. The way that they um, handled the scout, I think they did it really well, and we did a great job of being able to execute the things that they set up for us. Did you want to add Ben or you? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, just to tag on with that, I mean, they definitely seemed to give us a great uh, game plan. I mean, I really, I mean, again, a key part of that was, too, was just kind of be ourselves, you know, play our type of, our, our type of game, and we knew if we did that, we'd have a, have a good outcome. All right, left middle. Michael Deamer, Century Media. Uh, DJ, you have obviously been a crowd favorite in the last couple of weeks or the last week. And I, every time you touch the ball, it feels like the energy just gets higher. Do you, what is your uh, mindset when that happens, and how does that affect you? Uh, it's an awesome feeling. Whether they're cheering or not, my, my mindset is going to be to either find a good shot or get my teammates involved in a way that can win games. and. It's nice to know that they trust in me and that they believe in everything that we're trying to do here, and it just happened to be me tonight. All right, right front. Nathan Geese, Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Ben, you were in there most of the time when Warren Washington was kind of out there. Uh, did you kind of make a concentrated effort to kind of test him, knowing that he hadn't been out there for a little while? Was there a little bit extra there for you? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we knew that he had, he had uh, been out for a good number of games. And I mean, so I mean, it was absolutely we were trying to kind of see what we could do. I mean, how 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 much of a percent he was back. Uh, but I mean, honestly, really, we just had to focus on trying to trying to get through our game plan. I mean, it really wasn't even too much of a focus on on what they were doing, but more what we needed to do to succeed. Left front. Uh, Colby Trotter, uh, the technician. Uh, this is for you, DJ. So when you when you go out with foul trouble and then you see what Ben does, like, how does that make you feel to see him, you know, backing you up when you're in foul trouble? Uh, that gives me life, man. You know, when you see someone, you know, at the same position as you who's giving you that, it, it makes you better. I can't go out there and not play my best, and he's going out there giving it his all. That'd be letting him and my team down. Back middle. As you heard Coach Keith said, you guys got strong in the second half. You played five games in five days. Tech came in with an extra day of rest. Were there any concerns about stamina? Um, and what was able to propel you in that second half where this came from a close game to a double-digit deficit or double-digit lead fairly quickly? DJ, you want to start? 
Uh, I don't I don't think that was the focus too much. You know, you definitely don't want to sit and be lazy after, you know, winning a game the way we the game the games the way we did last week, but um I think the coaches did a good job of keeping us moving, and, you know, focusing on what's next and we'll celebrate, you know, after the season's over. Uh, absolutely. I mean, as far as I mean, we've heard a lot about fatigue, I mean, through our, our ACC tournament run and even now, and I mean, no matter how many times people keep saying it, I mean, it seems like we just keep getting stronger with every game we play, so Try and keep that going. Front and right. PJ, you're getting a lot of more attention from outside of your program. With you got fans cheering when you get the ball, booing when you don't get the ball. How do you, how do you react to all this and what's kind of happened to your stardom over the last week? Uh, I think it, I think it's awesome. It's a it's a great feeling when you know people are behind you. But you know you try to try not to get too high or too low. I think it's awesome, but. That's not what you know makes us win. So I want to still stay focused, even though I do enjoy it a lot. Any more questions for our student athletes? All right. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Now, the, now the real question is about y'all while you're gone. We talk about you when you leave. I'm glad I get to leave then. <laughs> or when all of the grown folks are left in the building. That's all. All right, once again, please raise your hand. <clears throat> Questions for Coach Keats? Front and right. I asked you yesterday about how you were kind of game planning with what war and without war, and P was out there. What were you guys trying to get accomplished with, with him out there? Now? Yeah, you know, um, he's such a unique target offensively, and so we sacrificed a little bit of giving up a few threes because we wanted to go under all of the ball screens so he didn't have the ability to rim run. I thought he got loose on us a couple times, but he's such a big target, and those, guys, those guards do a really good job of getting in the paint and throwing it up to him late. And so you know, we, we knew the way he scores, we had to change our ball screen coverage a little bit to take away his rim runs. Colby uh, Kobe Trotter, technician. I felt like early in the season, the ball would stick a little bit more like one guy. But now, especially since the ACC tournament run, there's been a lot of ball movement and different guys scoring like tonight, like four different guys in double figures. All three of your big men were scoring, and obviously the guards were helping facilitate that. So what's kind of gone into that? Well, I just think we're following game plans. Like, you know, when you take – you got transfers. I don't think people think it's supposed to happen right away. You know, we lost 34 points from our guards. And it took us a little time just to get clicking on both ends of the floor and understanding scouting reports. Like, that's the one thing from the ACC tournament and here we've really understood. We thought we had an advantage um, throwing the ball inside. And it worked out. We got 49 points. I think it's 49 from our post play. And that was because we were very aggressive and guys understanding. So uh, we're going to make some mistakes. Yes, but we're going to limit our mistakes. And, and one of them is the ball sticking. we got to move the ball. We, we talk about a lot of player and ball movement. Back middle. Coach, Texas Tech is a strong three-point shooting team. What were you able to do defensively to limit them 7-31 to 31 tonight? Well, we, we were, you know, we, we did. I thought we did a good job on Pop. Pop's been good. Um, you know, he was one for 10 for three. Uh, I think they, they, they had taken 14 at the half. And I, I told the team they would at least take 30, and they did. But that's so much of a, um, a big part of their offense. And we wanted to be there on the catch and take them away. And I thought that guys did a good job guarding the three-point line. Right middle. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Kevin, how much fun is it for you to see DJ when he gets the ball in the post and the crowd starts going crazy? It's just built up so much more over the last couple of weeks. What's that like for you as, as a coach on the sideline? Well, he was a local star. You know, for a whole year now, the national, everybody in the national media is starting to understand that. And, I mean, he's just fun. He scores and, you know, he gets beat up all the time. And, you know, he's almost got to play through contact. But it is so fun to, to watch him. And, you know, I, I consider him a closer for us. You know, we put him in the game and he closes the game. And it's so tough because every, every coach that we play against, he got a major decision. Are you going to trap him? Or are you going to let him play one-on-one? -on -one? And we've seen it, you know, uh, different ways. And tonight they let him play one-on-one. -on -one and he kind of started off slow but got going at the end. Back middle. Hey, 
Coach, can you talk about Mohamed Diara's growth uh, through the ACC tournament tonight? Excellent on the boards, contributing offensively. From the beginning of this season to where he is now, has any player taken as big a leap as he has? No, um, he's grown. And, and I'll say this, um, our league, he's battle-tested. I mean, we, we got a great league. And going through the ACC, playing 20 games in the ACC, and obviously the tournament has really helped Mo grow. And, you know, he's become the, the, you know, the forward that we expected, you know, can pick and pop, can handle a little bit, can be a really good defender, um, can score around the basket. And I think just playing against the, the great players in our league has really helped him grow to this point where he's at right now. Questions for Coach? All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.